Greetings, everyone. Thank you for, I thank God for this time. <clears throat> we are going to continue with our series of the Word of God. And uh, allow me pray and uh, we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We greatly appreciate for your goodness. These five letters, you allowed us to come to a point of sharing your word and uh, giving us understanding of your word. We thank you. We pray, Lord, that these words, or rather, uh, thy word, which are necessary for our salvation, will be made plain and clear to us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, the other day, we we looked at the power of God and how uh, God did create by the power of his word and by the same power, we see how effectively uh, it works in us effectively. Um, allow me begin from the book of Matthew chapter 4, chapter 8, verses 8. There is this power in the word of God, even as we today will be looking at, uh, or rather considering the word of God as truth and its sanctifying power. Today we look at the word of God as truth and its sanctifying power. But uh, allow me look at, or rather consider the centurion. We, at the end of our last program, we considered uh, how effectively the word of God works in us. And uh, 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 this is so interesting to get it as well in Matthew 8, verses 8, told about the story of a, a centurion whose servant was uh, actually sick. Um, uh, it says, My servant lies at home, sick of palsy, grievously tormented. And I uh, continue by saying, and Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. I want us to see the power of God, the word of God in bringing restoration or healing, both physically and spiritually. We know that a complete health means to be um, to be actually well uh, mentally physically and spiritually that is complete restoration and that is what god wants to do unto us and uh, he is going to do it by the power of his word both physical mental spiritual restoration healing uh, god is going to accomplish by his word by the power that, that is in his word and uh, we saw that that his word uh, the divine the divine word also actually symbolize Christ. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worth that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only. Uh, for I am a man under authority. So a man under authority speaks by his, ex tells Christ what to do by his experience. Says I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Uh, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them the, uh, that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith uh, not for in, uh, so great faith not, not in Israel. And uh, the story continues in verses 13. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed. So Christ did spoke a word only, and uh, the centurion servant was healed. I mean, that is so interesting uh, uh, how other commentaries um, really are stressed on the power in God's word that uh, brings restoration healing. Psalms 107 verses 20. This is what Christ God says. Psalms 107. 
verses 20, the Bible says, um, fools because of their transgression, let me begin from verse 17, and because of their uh, iniquities are afflicted, their souls abhorred all manner of meat, and they draw nigh unto gates of death. Uh, verses 18. And, and he saved them out of their distress. He sent his word. Amen. And he healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sends his word. Speak thou the word only. And so we see Christ, uh, God, sending his word. And his word comes with a healing power. And so we see uh, our spiritual maladies, uh, spiritual uh, illness, uh, physical, can be restored by the power to note. And so wherever we get The word of God is the thing. And uh, allow me very fast now to consider the word of God as truth, number one. And then we will see its sanctifying uh, a power. It's sanctifying power. Uh, uh, the word of God is truth. First, things. I want to go very fast. My network is poor. I am just struggling uh, to see this work. Uh, first, uh, Kings 17.24, a very interesting chapter, and uh, uh, to me, a very interesting chapter uh, for the remnant people. I, it says, um, this is Elijah and uh, a woman whose child is dead, and um, uh, we are considering the word of God as truth and it's sanctifying influence. And so we come here and, and the Lord had the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came into him again and they revived. By the way, uh, we see also restoration here by the power of the word because the Lord had the voice of Elijah and then the child was restored, was revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him into his mother. And Elijah said, see thy son live it. See thy son live it. Listen to the uh, uh, response of the woman, which is very interesting. It says, and the woman said to Elijah, now by this I know that thou art a man of God. Now by this I know that thou art a man of God. And that the word of the Lord in thy mouth, the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. So God's servants, the word, uh, have the word of God. And he says that the word of God in their mouth uh, is truth. Rather, the word of God is truth. That is very interesting to know. Let's now go to the New Testament and see actually 1 Corinthians, another interesting verse. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 7. Uh, if the Bible says, verse 7, now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you. Um, this is not the verse I need. I guess it is Second Corinthians, if not first. Uh, Second Corinthians 6, 7, let me try. Okay, yeah, it is. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. So we see uh, Paul writing to Corinthians, he says, by the word of truth. So the word of God has always been regarded as the word of truth. The word of truth by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. And so we see uh, the word of God always being uh, uh, attributed with the truth. The word of God is truth. Uh, First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Uh, we still considering the word of God as truth. Verses 13. Uh, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing. For this cause thank we God without ceasing. Because when you receive the word of God, which we ha you heard of us, he received it not as the word of man. So the word of God is not as the word of man. 
Why? But as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh in you also who believe. And so the word of God is attributed with the truth. It is known because it is true. It is not as the word of man. And um, that is very interesting. So having seen that the word of God is truth, and uh, I, I think John 17, 17, a very common verse, we'll be able to uh, to crown it, to see that it's uh, the sense of the word of God being truth. And, it's, and now we will uh, begin looking at its sanctifying influence, or uh, rather power, uh, it says that sanctify them through thy truth, the word is truth. And so we see that Bible sanctification is through the word of God, which is truth. I, 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 I need to repeat that. Bible sanctification is through the word of God. And we are told that that word of God is truth. Um, interesting to note. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And so we are looking into being consecrated, set aside, being cleansed from sin as a, another definition or rather as we consider what is sanctification. We are set aside for holy purpose. We also cleanse from uh, uh, the soul is cleansed from its moral defilement by the word of God because it has the sanctifying influence, which is wrought by the truth in the word of God. And so no sanctification is gained by error. Uh, 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 the other day we were considering a rebirth, uh, being born again by the word of God. He says that we are born again by the word of God, but not corruptible word of God, incorruptible word of God. And so that is very very interesting and i would want us to uh consider a lot of things as we uh really uh see these things in first thessalonians it is the will of god that we be sanctified uh it says in first thessalonians uh rather let me just say for this is the will of god even your sanctification first thessalonians verses 3 uh, it says for this is the will of God even your sanctification this is the will of God even your sanctification uh, that you should abstain from fornication mm -hmm. that every one of you should know how to process his vessel in sanctification and in honor so uh, our body is a living uh, as a temple of the Holy Spirit uh, it has to be sanctified, and that is the will of God that we be sanctified. And we have seen that a sanctification is by the word of God, which is truth. Uh, by the word of God, which is truth. Let's confirm that, or rather, still consider that in First Peter. First uh, Peter, one verses twenty-two. It says. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth. Seeing you have sanctified yourself. Mm -hmm. How? In obeying the truth. And so sanctification comes by obeying the truth. Or rather walking in the truth. Through the spirit and to unfeigned love of brethren. Seeing that you love one another with a pure heart. And so another aspect that we see through the spirit. Uh we are sanctified or made pure, our soul are made pure in obedience to truth, which is the word of God. Thy word uh, is truth. And so that is uh, the agency of uh, actually uh, receiving sanctification. And uh, John 15 verses 3 John 15 verses 3 also speaks about this. John 15 verses 3. Uh, John 15 verses 3. Cleansing, uh, sanctification brought by the word of God, which is truth. Uh, it says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Wow. Now you are clean 
through the word that I have spoken unto you. Very interesting. We are cleansed. We are sanctified. We are made pure by the word which is spoken uh, through, uh, or rather we can say now, through the word of God, the Bible. And so we are made clean. We are cleansed. We are purified. We are sanctified by that word. Elsewhere in Ephesians, I believe, 5 verses 26, uh, Ephesians 5 26 has similar notes. Ephesians, um, Ephesians 5 26. Now, listen, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. So, sanctifying, cleansing. Uh, one and uh, uh, one, one thing it with the washing of water, and then he finished by the word. And so, he might sanctify the church. We are the church, we compose the church of God. So, God wants to sanctify his church by the washing of water by the word, amen. And so, that word is truth. And so uh, God wants to sanctify you. God wants to sanctify you. He wants to make you pure uh, by obedience in truth. We cannot be uh, make our ways right with God uh, in error, uh, but we, we rather have to obey the truth for us to be made, uh, to be cleansed uh, rather by, 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 by God, by, by God. And so we see sanctification, uh, is uh, a, 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 the Bible doctrine of receiving truth, obedience to the truth, walking the truth, and then we are made right with God. Yeah. We are sanctified. We are sanctified. Uh, 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 there is also another aspect that Paul speaks about in, uh, uh, in Romans. Paul also speaks about sanctification of the spirit. And uh, we would want to consider uh, a lot of stuff because we see we are sanctified by the truth, which is the word of God. And then Paul also speaks another language of uh, introducing sanctification of spirit. Is it different from the word, the sanctification that is wrought by obedience in the word of God? I believe definitely uh, not, but we we'll want to consider what the word of God says. And so... Uh, the 13 of uh, 15 of uh, 15, 16 of uh, Romans says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel, ministering the gospel. The gospel is the word of God, uh, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be accepted, being sanctified by Holy Ghost. And so, uh, Paul speaks about being sanctified by the Holy Ghost for him to preach the gospel. What is this sanctification of the Holy Spirit? What is this sanctification of the Holy Spirit? John 16, Christ also speaks as the Holy Spirit. We've seen that sanctification is wrought by the word in truth, uh, uh, which is truth. And uh, Paul also speaks of sanctification of the Spirit. And uh, let's consider uh, John 16, where he says that, um, verses 13, How about when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Amen. When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. And uh, so we see the word of God is truth and it sanctifies, the spirit also sanctifies, and it is truth, and it can, it can lead you to truth. So let's join the dots, let's join the dots and see, uh, uh, actually, in John, uh, in John, it's same John 5, uh, rather 663, this is what uh, the word of God says, uh, 663, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing. 
the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Wow. So the words are spirit. Spirit is truth. The word of God is truth. And so here Christ says, the words I speak unto you, they are, they are spirit and they are life. And they are able. So we see when Paul speaks about sanctification of the spirit, he still uh, acknowledges that the word of God brings cleanses, purifies, brings the presence of the spirit, uh, which sanctifies, uh, which uh, actually sanctifies. Allow me to uh, read something from uh, uh, 12MR uh, concerning that. Yeah, it's uh, as we come to as we come to uh, the end of this, uh, reading just a few quotes in uh, 12 MR. Uh, 260, 260, paragraph 1, uh, it says, this is what it says, uh, uh, this is the promise that uh, God is giving to his church, Christ's presence with believers by his Holy Spirit. This is what he says, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit, so the another comforter was the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Christ was about to depart to his home in the heavenly courts. But he assured his disciples that he will send them another comforter who will abide with them forever uh, to the guidance of the comforter. All who believe in Christ may implicit, implicitly trust he is the spirit. So all who believe in Christ may implicitly trust he, Christ, is the spirit of truth. But this truth uh, but this truth, the world can neither discern nor receive. So notice that those who trust in, believe in Christ may implicitly trust that he, Christ, is the spirit of truth. Now, uh, before he left them, uh, Christ gave his followers a positive promise that after his ascension, he would send them the Holy Spirit. Go ye therefore and say, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. So I just wanted us to see that... Uh, he, Christ, is the spirit of truth. Remember in uh, elsewhere, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so he, Christ, uh, uh, is the word. He, he, is the he is the spirit of truth. And so uh, we are able to see how effectively we can be sanctified to have the life of Christ, the character of Christ, uh, because uh, he is sending us his spirit to sanctify us that comes by his word, that comes by his word. In 2MR, uh, in 2MR, sorry, in 2MR, let me try and see if it's possible. Uh, 2MR, uh, let me look for text comes spirit truth uh, we are told that Jesus comes as the spirit of truth I'm just looking for that quote Jesus comes spirit of truth okay let me try uh -huh. mm, this is saying Okay, so we are told that Jesus comes as the spirit of truth. Okay, this is not it.
Jesus comes as the spirit of truth. And uh, we know that indeed is the spirit of truth and he can, he can be able to uh, sanctify our life and cleanse us from all, all sanctify our life and cleanse us from all moral defilement. So let me stop sharing my screen and uh, continue. And so we see how uh, Christ comes as the spirit of truth and he says, I am I am the I am the truth. But uh, he is uh, actually the way, the truth and the life. He is he comes to sanctify our life by his word. When we are considering the other time, we consider Christ as the word of God who existed from the beginning with God. And uh, uh, by him, the creation was done. And so today we are considering as, as the word of God as truth and Christ saying that I am the truth. And uh, uh, it's sanctifying influence. And we see that we are sanctified uh, by the spirit and uh, the spirit is actually uh, the words that are spoken unto us. And so allow me to just read uh, one more, one more quotation, one more quotation, and we we end it there. You just wanted to use thirty minutes. This is uh, this is I guess this great controversy. Great controversy. Uh four hundred and sixty-nine. Nine paragraph two. Very interesting chapter to me. Uh we are told about sanctification as we even pray. Sanctification. Uh -huh. We are told, number one, that true sanctification, I don't know whether it's together, true sanctification is a Bible doctrine. Uh, that is a very interesting uh, point to know. The Apostle Paul, yeah, the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Thessalonians church declares, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. And he prays, the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Uh, that is uh, First Thessalonians we've read. Uh, the Bible clearly teaches what sanctification is and how it is to be attained. So, uh, the Savior prayed for his disciples, sanctify them through the truth. The word is true. And Paul teaches that believers are to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Romans, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? Jesus told his disciples, where he is, the Spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truths. And the psalmist says the law is truth. And so the spirit of God, if it guides to the whole truth, then it guides you to the word of God. Remember, we say we saw that our sanctification is by obedience in the word of God, the uncorruptible word of God. Uh, then it says that the, uh, the Lord of God is also truth. And since the Lord of God is holy and just and good, a transit of a transit isn't very interesting a transit of divine perfection and so we are looking into a christian perfection uh having a a, a sanctified life it is by obedience to the word of god which brings sanctification uh we have this idea and it's actually addressed in the upper 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 lines that uh, there is a wrong idea of, about uh, uh, sanctification and we are told that uh, sanctification is rather not it's not a mere goodness it, uh, it is believing in the truth and our life being in line with the word of God and uh, uh, a transit of divine perfection and so perfection yeah, it is not a mere goodness it is not feeling it is uh working by principles of truth as in, as in the word of god it follows that a character formed by obedience uh obedience to that law will be holy wow so there are characters that 
uh, we can have mere goodness. That is not sanctification. Sanctification is, uh, or rather perfection of Christian character is uh, life, or rather or that is formed, a character that is formed by obedience to the law of God. Christ is a perfect example of such character. He says, I have kept my father's commandment. I have kept my father's commandment. I do always those things that please him. The followers of Christ are to become like him by the grace of God to form characters in harmony with the principles of his law. Wow. This is Bible sanctification, which is wrought by the truth in the word of God. And so we cannot be sanctified in hell. We can form good habits. Uh, we, we can be charitable. We can be good people in the society. We can uh, have all these good attributes, but without sanctified by the obedience in the word of God, that is not sanctified. That is not sanctification. So uh, friends of Jesus are uh, and this is a, a, a very interesting theme, and we will we should consider a, a, a loving the truth, having a love of truth of the word of God, and allowing our 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 characters be transformed by those truths as the, as they are in the word of God. Not just having a, a, a mere knowledge of truth, because a mere knowledge of truth cannot save us. What we are taking to heaven is character. Characters are formed after divine uh, pattern that is in his word. And so may God bless you. Uh, looking forward to, to share more concerning the word of God and uh, having seen his impact in our life. So our characters are formed uh, by obedience to the Lord of God, which is truth. Uh, we receive the spirit of God. Not because we are uh, we we do we are just we are having good characters, but because we are having uh, characters that are are translated are are, are formed uh, by obedience to the word of God. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for this far. May your will be done as you draw us closer to you. May you help us to. Have a love for your truth. In this generation, many have uh, have considered as it's something that doesn't matter what you believe. You can just be good, and that is enough. We are learning that, Lord, uh, our characters has to be formed by your truth. And so we pray, Lord, that we will not just be excited about truth, but have a transformation. Uh, a, a character formed after divine similitude by obedience to the truth. My prayer by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God, 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 God bless you. Uh, see you another time.